Hi YouTube. We're here today with an amazing, amazing first time for YouTube. We're going to open a box that came in the mail today. Probably never seen one of these before. You're going to use a knife, cut the tape. This comes from Hobby King. This model's been out for a long time. It's on sale. And I just want you guys to see what it looks like when you order from Hobby King. So I got to order here. This is printed off. I ordered 150 bucks worth of stuff, 146, 30, 36 worth of stuff. I never order one thing from Hobby King because I hate paying shipping. Hobby King, why do you still charge shipping? Don't be so dumb. Anyway, if you want to order from China, I understand you got to charge shipping. Wow, look at this. That is, these are good bags, guys. I work for a packaging company, and these look like they're pretty good air cushions, but I don't know if they're our brand, so never mind. <laughs> um, looks like some paper in here, and there's a lot of it in there. And then, yes, this is one of the things I've been looking for, mini JST connectors for 2S batteries. This is the sort of thing you buy at Hobby King. You will make up for any sort of bad deals that you had at Hobby King. Oh look, tons of magnets, awesome. Magnets, another good thing to buy at Hobby King. Really cheap and good quality. I also bought, uh, this model's got a little bit of damage. We'll do a little video on that here later. It looks like just a fun little glider. And then I bought this camera that's for Androids. I mean, it was like, seven bucks or something, so I don't know. We'll see how that works, maybe we'll do a video on that. But anyway, I just want you guys to see kind of how Hobby King does this. This comes from Oregon. Um, there's two US, USA warehouses. There's another thing underneath this box. I'm trying to grab it out. Or more of those. And that's the other thing you'll notice when I order stuff. I don't just order one, I get a bunch. Go ahead and pause it, I'll show you these people how this works. All right guys, um, this is this is a regular 2S balance charge lead, which would be like the Hobby King style or like virtually any brand other than Horizon Hobby. These are the Horizon Hobby um, E-Flight compatible batteries for your ultra micros. And you'll notice this has a female balance plug, which are hard to get. Um, well, you can get them, but you gotta spend a fortune for them. This thing was like three bucks maybe. And all I have to do is take and mount an XT60 on here, and I'll show you how I'm going to use this to charge up to six of these in parallel. All right, guys. So the way this works is you can balance charge these batteries. Um, you'll just plug each of them in. And I have a bunch of these. I get these things from Hobby King. They're really good value. They work really nice. They're probably on par with your E-Flight packs. And... Um, you know, so you can charge different sizes, but it's nice if you have the same size. You just total up the milliamp hours um, or amp hours for each of the batteries. You don't have to do six. You can do uh, a variety of those. And then basically these two, you'll just want to be careful to keep these leads separated from one another. So those would plug into your balance charge port or your regular um, ports on your charger. But I'm going to take and put an XT60 on this so I can just use my balance charger here. So I can actually charge multiple batteries and you'll plug that in and then you just come over here and see, see if you can get right on top of this part here. Okay, that's perfect. So then basically you'll just go in here, you'll change your setting to whatever amp hours you want to do. So like these ones are only 300 uh, milliamp hours each. So I would set this down if I've got two of them. I would usually charge it like about half of the rate, but you could actually go up to um, if they're 0.3 and they're 35 C, so you could do 3.5 times three, um, but that would be nuts. I'm not gonna charge them that fast. And then of course you change the three S down to two S and then you basically would start it and it would go. But because I don't have the XT60 on here and I would like to make it quick and easy, um, I'll wait on that. I just wanted to show you real quick how I'm gonna do that, which is super nice because my alternative charger, which is this ridiculous thing, this Seltra, is super expensive and if you're looking for a way to charge umx batteries these things are a super rip off they're like 30 bucks or 20 bucks each and then you got to buy one of these which i mean of course you don't have to buy it from them 
but I, I've had to fix both of mine and um, it's a real pain in the butt and I hate this thing. It takes forever to charge. You never know what you're getting with it. And so of course, if you can go with something like this, you'll at least know what you're getting. Um, and you don't have to have this whole fiasco of chargers, but I just go through a ton of batteries when I'm charging. So anyway, quick side note, we'll get back to the unboxing now. So I just want to show you guys the part number for that for Hobby King if you want to try to order that. Um, really good value, like I said. You can't buy these connectors, otherwise it's super hard to get them. So we'll go ahead and uh, get to the real unboxing now, which is going to be for this little curious box. And uh, it is a vampire. So we're just going to cut it open. And uh, just for the record, everybody watching this awesome unboxing video, I don't even understand unboxing videos. But if you don't like people opening boxes and watching them open boxes, then this is probably not the video for you. Wow, look at that thing! It's a Durafly DH100 Vampire MK6. Um, package looks to be in good shape. Just gonna slide this thing out here. Oh, it's made in China. What? <laughs> Okay, so this is um, supposed to be a version 2, and a version 2, meaning I believe it comes with, and this is a really nice box actually, it's got fold tabs instead of having just a crappy unmarked box, and if you open it up, the wings are sitting right on top of each other, but they are taped in individual packages, which is nice. Durafly usually does a pretty good job of packaging these things, so what they'll do is they'll secure the wings to this uh, separation piece, and then that protects them from one another. And then if you look down in here, the stuff can't really move too far because they tape the bags inside to the outside of the bag, or the outside of the box. So, and then they take and they put these braces in here and uh, the braces get glued to the inside of the box, which makes it a pretty secure hold, and then you can just kind of pop it out. And this thing comes pre-installed with the EDF unit. Of course, you can't see. Finish looks good. Nothing crazy, I mean, it looks good. And big old air inlet there, that's awesome. That thing should help a lot with getting the air into these things. They're so uh, air hungry. So I'm just gonna dismount these wings here. And we'll see how we look for quality on that. We'll just give you a quick look on that. This comes with retracts. Uh, the retracts protrude a little bit from the, the bottom of the wing, which is a little on the ugly side, but I think I'm gonna get over it for like less than $100 for this model. That's a pretty phenomenal deal. So I'll be doing something to make that prettier. And uh, it looks like this model will be pretty easy to add flaps to it. If you've ever seen any of my videos, there's pretty much flaps on any plane that's worth flying. Um, I understand this plane doesn't need flaps from what everybody says. Don't misunderstand. When I say I'm adding flaps, it's not because it needs it. It's because I want them. So there we go. Looks like decent quality. Uh, vertical sta or horizontal stabilizer with the uh, elevator. Looks like decent quality hinging too, which is nice. It's just... It's just foam hinging, but it's sturdy. It doesn't feel like it's gonna rip off right away. Feels good, you'll get a couple of crashes out of that. Canopy's not attached, what the heck? Hey, you know what's better about having a canopy that's detached? If you get a pilot head that's like 14 times larger than life, like on my Freewing A10, for example. Oh, beautiful plane. And then they put a pilot in there that's like three times the size it should be. Come on, Freewing, really? 70 millimeter beautiful fans, but then you put this guy in there, it's like three times bigger than he should be. This feels a little bit weak. Uh, I've seen some guys have tried to do spars in these. Uh, this would be the tail boom. Uh, of course, there's gonna be two tail booms for us on this plane. And uh, one of the two tail booms carries a signal wire for the servo that'll go to the elevator. Um, in my case, I'm probably eventually gonna add um, a second servo wire, which would run the rudders. So probably the way I'll do that is I'll actually run a, a servo wire through the other side as well and then I can add rudders depending on if the rudders are needed. This is a bank and yank plane. Um, mine's going to be a bank and yank 
with uh, flaps. You get this beautiful manual. It's color, which is kind of nice. Um, I'm sure there's lots of awesome Changlish in here that would be hilarious to read, but I'm probably not going to do that. Um, we'll do a build video um, probably on this, but I uh, don't think that's going to be included in this today. So be looking forward to that. And there's one more box inside this box, which yeah, I think is just a space keeper. So I'll pop it out real quick. And it looks like, okay, so yeah, this does actually have hardware in it. So you'll want to be careful to check that. You end up with some control horns and a couple of Y cables. Um, and then that's pretty much it, guys. It looks like the box is now empty. We have these, these nice little foam pieces, which um, much to the chagrin of my wife, I will keep every last piece of them yes. and until the end of time. So yeah, I use them, though. I'll use them to make plane mounts and things like that. So it looks like the canopy is, is nice and for like an FPV setup. If you're going to do an FPV, I like that they left this dismounted. So as you decide how you want to do that, you could go ahead and get your uh, FPV gear in there. Of course, you know I'm not a big FPV fan if you've watched much of my videos. But it looks like everything's here. Um, build quality looks good. Looks like it's going to be easy to uh, gouge this with your fingernails and tools. So be careful. It's going to be easy to rash. Feels like this canopy is maybe a little bit on the flexible side, but sometimes flexibility is a good thing when you're crashing an airplane. Um, let's pop out the main fuselage and just get an idea for the quality and the finish. Yeah, it looks good. I mean, it's nothing, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and, and say how amazing it is, but it, it looks nice. It's going to be a fun plane to fly from what I understand. Very ample size. Um, if I want to put in a 4,000 milliamp, 30, uh, excuse me, a 4,000 milliamp 4S, uh, 60C Turnigy, which I may or may not use this battery. I'm probably going to go with a 3300 or a 4000. Uh, it's got this, it's got a plywood base in here. It's painted silver, which is nice. It's got a Velcro strap, and I'm just going to pop that down. And we'll just see if this thing fits real quick. I mean, you guys, obviously, you're going to use whatever. Whoa, look at that, guys. That's sweet. They have another, oh, it's a, it looks like a, uh, Looks like they have a UBC in here, um, which I'm, I'm assuming that's what that is, or that might be for something else. Um, and then, yeah, it looks like a UBC. Um, and by the way, guys, you can see the fan in there. That fan's gonna suck air through and cool everything, which is gonna be awesome. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, looks like the ESC is mounted here, so the, the air is gonna get sucked up past it. But in terms of that 4,000 milliamp hour battery, of course, you gotta get all the wires worked out. Looks like it might actually fit in there without too much modification at all. I mean, you might have to make a mod just to kind of get your wires to um, to fit. So we'll see how that goes, guys. And it looks like the canopy is going to struggle to fit down in there. Um, but like with any other plane you've ever worked with, by the time you get your server wires where they need to go, you get your receiver installed in there, which I'm going to be using 11 RX 7 channel with stabilization. Um, you may end up having some issues there. Uh, looks like the nose gear retract is good. It's got some um, metal leads for the steerable once it opens and deploys. And um, so we'll see how this thing goes together. Just for size comparison, folks, let's do a 3300 milliamp 4S. Let's see how that fits up in there. Again, I realize it's just a, an unboxing, but this will be a 60C pack from Zippy Compact, another Hobby King product. And um, I don't know how far I'm going to need that to the nose, but it looks like the 3300 right out of the box is going to probably work. Um, and real quick, I want to show you something. I already hit, already hit this with my finger and uh, made a little gouge in it. So this plane is going to get dinged up a little bit. So hopefully we don't have a lot of crashes with it. Um, but anyway, you guys get the idea. Be looking out for a more detailed build video. And thanks again for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe.